Resistant nightmare bacteria is on the rise in the U.S., jumping nearly 70% since 2019, according to the CDC. We're learning a lot more about this, and it's pretty scary. The increase is fueled by bacteria with the NDM gene, which are extremely hard to treat. Only two IV antibiotics actually work. Nine News Health expert Dr. Pyle Coley is joining us now to explain a little bit more about this. Dr. Pyle, good morning. Or Dr. Coley, good morning. Good morning, guys. <laughs> same, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, why is this called nightmare bacteria? For so many reasons, it really is a nightmare for physician. So one you already mentioned, Jordan, sometimes only a couple of antibiotics work and those antibiotics can be toxic, but in some cases you have one or zero antibiotics that actually work to treat this bacteria. So doctors aren't left with many options. It makes you really sick. So the mortality rate, people who die from it are about 40 to 50%. Whoa. And then third, it spreads very easily from one bacteria to another. So the thing that NDM resistance gene that makes it resistant to the antibiotics is on a basically what's called a mobile DNA element. So it can easily move from one bacteria to another. And a lot of us actually are carriers of this bacteria, healthy really? people in our intestines, in our nose. So we can also spread it to others in nursing homes and those with weakened immune systems. Well, we asked you if this is anything like MRSA and you said this is even worse than much, MRSA. Much, much worse than MRSA. So MRSA is methyl methicillin resistant staph aureus, which is one of the type of resistant bacteria that we have. Staph aureus, as we know, lives in our skin, it can live in our nose, but MRSA version of it can be a little bit more aggressive, so you need a special antibiotic to cover it. In this particular bacteria's case, it's called the N it's got an NDM gene, which is the New Delhi metallo beta lactamase. So it makes it resistant to one of our biggest gun antibiotics, which are called carbapenems. So this is what we used to use when we really didn't have a lot of options, and this particular bacteria is resistant to it. And we used to think it's only something that happens in other countries or people who come back from other countries are the ones at risk for it. But after COVID, we're seeing a huge surge here in the United States. In fact, an increase of 460% in this bacteria. Now, the good thing is out of every 100,000 infections, only 1.35 are due to this bacteria. But again, that's a 460% increase from just a few years ago. Quick follow-up, explain that increase that you're talking about right there. So if we, during COVID, we used a lot of antibiotics. A lot of people got into the hospital. There was a lot of essentially person-to-person -person contact in a way that that wasn't there before, especially with healthcare workers and people who wouldn't normally be part of healthcare. And then the overuse of antibiotics with some people actually underusing antibiotics. You know, the doctor gives you a 10 day course and after five days you feel better, so you stop taking the rest of it. Or you have a viral infection and they give you antibiotics. All of this contributes to breeding resistance. So it teaches our bacteria how to fight our antibiotics because you give them just enough to teach them, but not enough that you actually overcome it. So that's what we think has led to this particular increase. I feel like there's been so many people recently, they're like, yeah, they couldn't figure out what, it, what was wrong, so they gave me antibiotics. You know, I've got antibiotics. And, and I'm just yeah. like, this is part of the problem, though. Like, we, we kind of have to only take antibiotics if we really, really need them. We really should think about that. And, and that happens all the time. You go to the doctor, you have a cough. Okay, here's some steroids and some yeah. antibiotics. Right. And of course you feel better, but it could all have just been a viral infection and you'll feel better anyway. So I'm so glad you're saying that because we really need to be mindful ourselves of our children because where are we headed, guys? If mm -hmm. this is a bacteria that's resistant to all of our antibiotics, yeah. maybe one, maybe two works, and that too, the heavy duty ones that are toxic. What if and that's that stops now, right? Right. right. Yes. right. And it spreads from bacteria to bacteria. So it starts teaching other bacteria how to become resistant as well to those commonly used antibiotics. And it causes common infections. We're talking urinary tract infections, yeah. pneumonias, skin infections. And so it's really easy for us to get a cut or a wound or a bug bite. And if this antibiotic lives mm -hmm. in us, as it does in many people who are carriers, it can easily get infected and overwhelm our immune system. So maybe consider more holistic options before that antibiotic? Well, or? I would say if you have an, a bacterial infection, you need an antibiotic. Clues are, right. you know, you have a high fever, it's rapidly progressive, uh, or you, you know, your blood count, uh, white blood cell count, which are the infection fighting cells are very elevated. So use antibiotics appropriately. Don't be afraid of them. But don't pop an antibiotic every time you get a virus right. and mm -hmm. take a right. Z pack or mm -hmm. you take something else because you think it's going to make you feel better. And talk to your doctor about what the right option is. So glad we talked about this. Yeah. All right, Dr. Coley, Dr. Pyle, whatever. Doctor, yeah, <laughs> both your names, <laughs> both accurate. Yeah, Thanks for coming in. We'll be right back.